So one of the things I think it's helpful to say and talk about is process. Because right now, I'm trying to figure out a process with which we can use this godforsaken action camera <laughs> in a way that keeps my hands warm but also doesn't give everybody watching the video motion sickness. So I've got it mounted up on my shoulder with all the anti-bounce stuff turned off. And I'm gonna just talk for a little bit between here and the car. You know, one of the interesting um, pieces of being at, at Wesley and talking about change is that the, um, the narrative around what the last generation has looked like looks a lot different from the perspective of a mainline church than it does from a Unitarian Universalist perspective. And the Methodists, along with the Presbyterians and UCC and any number of, of sort of middle-of-the-road American Christian churches, have seen their membership just collapse over the last 20 or 30 years, like down, down by half. And for a while it looked like the evangelicals had the answer and the non-denominational folks had the answer, but in recent years they've also started seeing similar declines. So instead, what the conversation is, is this big, big discontinuous change in, in how folks relate to organized religion in America. Now that's really a scary thing for mainline churches. And it's a thing that we pretend we're insulated from in Unitarian Universalism, but I'm not convinced that we are, because some of the things that drive that distance from organized religion apply to us as well. You know, more events going on on Sunday morning, less of an expectation that you belong to a church, more mixed marriages, more feeling like rather than an answer from a church, I'm going to find the answers out myself. Now on that last one, we do get some folks in Unitarian Universalism, but it's a complicated story between their own journeys and the journey of our collective selves in covenant with each other. So that's the context in which this course happens. And I think it's a thing that we do need to think about. I've said many times, in the midst of the pandemic and otherwise, this church has been here for 150 years, it'll be here for another 150 years. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be here in the same way 150 years from now. It just doesn't. The church in 2020 looks a lot different than the Universalist Church in 1870. So that's the question for change for me, is how do we get, how do we do that on purpose? How do we do those changes because we want to do them, not because we're forced into them by circumstance? It didn't work in 1870. That, <laughs> Uh, the 1870 church uh, fell apart and had to reinvent itself as a church of a different denomination. And so we know that there are some pretty significant challenges when there's big disruptive change in the world. But I am very grateful to be here at a church that Let's me do stuff like this, right? Both, both taking doctorate of ministry courses where we think about this and talk about this, this question of change, but also things like strapping a camera to my shoulder and walking down a path talking about change in churches. I'm, I'm quite sure that the folks that I have passed on this path think that I'm a little out there and they do not know who's on the other side of this camera. Oh. But it is a joy to be able to do this. It's a joy to be in a place where experimentation is not, uh, is not a word that is feared, but that is embraced. It's been our watchword for the last nine months and, and will be going forward. We've got a lot, 
a lot of experiments to try as we come out of the end of this pandemic and into whatever a post-pandemic world is. We're going to have to try new things. We're going to have to innovate in ways that we haven't before. And I know that's tiring. I know I am often tired these days. But it's also really exhilarating to say we're in the midst of this crisis and, and we could come out of it breaking some patterns that have been entrenched for decades, generations. And the church will be better for it, for us having done that work. Anyway, <laughs> that was a pretty long ramble for what is essentially a technology test to see if I can get this mount to work. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll check on the mount tonight and we'll check on what I said and if it, if it was anything good, maybe this will make it into the update on Monday. Have a great night, everybody.